There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Thrasher's Paradise on the Thrashing Couch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest all the way from Edmonton, Alberta, Tales of the Tomb. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good, good. good. It's a pretty chill afternoon here in Edmonton, so. Has it started snowing yet? Not here. In Calgary, yeah. they just got fucked. They got like a <laughs> foot of snow, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, three hours south of here. So. Classic. <laughs> <Just kidding>. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Well, you guys should be excited. You just released your newest album last month, Volume 2, Medesha. Men, uh, Mendici, Mendichumum. It's a, it's got a, it's a working. It's a few ways to pronounce it. I mean, uh, you'd have to throw it on Google Translate to get the exact way to say it. We always screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, how does it feel to finally have after that four-year gap to finally release a brand new album? Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty killer. I don't know. It took a long time to get everything all prepared and. Few hurdles here and there, but we made it through and just got this album out. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of these songs, some of the I think four of the song, four of the songs on the EP are are actually like four years old because mm -hmm. we wrote them back when we had first been with our first lineup. So finally releasing some of those songs after such a long time is really good. Yeah. Excellent. Now, what has changed within those four years besides members? Uh. <clears throat> That's, I mean, not much really at the core of the band. I mean, we still sort of strive for the same sort of theme, which is reality is scarier than fiction. And, uh, you know, with me and Trey, Trey and I have been writing music uh, all through that up and down period with members here and there. So, so I guess the core of the band or the ideology has never really changed. But, uh, but yeah, we definitely had a few members come and go, so... Yeah, with that, yeah, we still try to we still try to stick to our tagline, which is uh, reality is scarier than fiction, and that's why we write about uh, serial killers and conspiracy re uh, conspiracy theories, trying to have an objective telling of of some of these events. Yeah, excellent. Now, when or what was the main thought process going into the writing for these songs from the new album? Um, with that, when we decided to kind of come up with our second EP, um, we had songs like Fall, Sinful Messiah, 9-11, uh, written, and we were trying to figure out, like, how can we put these three songs on an EP with what, what about them is sort of, like, ties them together. And that's what first brought on the conspiracy element, uh, Fall being, you know, Paul McCartney died in the 60s and they replaced him and that's a whole conspiracy theory. 9-11, I mean, that says it talks about itself. Uh, and then Sinful Messiah was kind of like a who shot first, kind of like the ATF denied uh, firing the first shot that created the, the like, a violent outbreak that caused that compound to burn down. And uh, they, they tried not to take uh, responsibility and neither did the Branch Davidians. So we kind of tried to stretch it as kind of like a who shot first conspiracy. And then... From there, we decided to write about this Russian incident called the Dyalov Pass incident. Uh, and it, these kind of nine Russian hikers disappear in the mountains and they're found a couple months later, or discombobulated and a bunch of crazy stuff happened. And then we, we wanted to write about an alien conspiracy and uh, we chose the Nightmare Hall um, just because, again, it was rumored alien testing uh, on humans and things like that. So it was pretty intense. So we just tried to tie it all together with... Uh, conspiracy theories and that's kind of how the ideology came and then we threw mermaid in a manhole on there as a bonus because it didn't really fit into any real life events like our tagline so we just wanted to put it out there as a bonus track because we weren't going to write an album that was based on movies or anything like that we try to stick we want to try to stick to more real life ish based events whether it be actually 100 percent true or not conspiracy or not but that's why mermaid's on it yeah, yeah. excellent yeah. now was there much hype surrounding this album being released by your fans? Uh, we had a couple of really close fans, you know, mm -hmm. like the Huff Brothers and Lewis and stuff like that. So we had a couple of close fans and friends that, like, it, it, some people that actually worked with their band, merch guys and stuff like that, that were really excited to finally get, like, um, not demos, you know, you know, finally, like, finished product and stuff like that. So there's a, there was a pretty, a lot, of, a lot of our friends, like, that follow the band were really stoked. So that was cool. It was nice. Yeah. 
Excellent. Trey, you seem to be a bit quiet over there. Is everything okay? <laughs> I'm all good. I'm all good. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Just asking. Uh, now, with this new album being released, that usually entails a little tour or a big tour. When can we expect you to hit the province of Ontario? Uh, that's a tricky question to answer at this time because just Corey and I right now, um, okay. however, we're working towards like jamming with some new members and stuff like that so we don't want to say anything for sure but you can be assured that once we get a full band going that we'll probably start touring like right away that's pretty much the plan so we just have to get that band element down first and then Good it's all smooth sailing from there yeah, yeah exactly so yeah 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 excellent now as you mentioned earlier you, the merch and I don't know where I'm even going with this. I'm just trying to think of something now to ask. <laughs> uh, shit, not again. If you like merch, we got merch you can check out on our band camp. We got yeah. tab books that we just made for the first okay. time. Yeah. We got a promo merch card, which is kind of like a Magic the Gathering promo kind of shout out. Uh, we got CDs, t shirts, and you can get it all in our band camp. I mean, uh, if you want anything shipped to you, if you're not in, in Edmonton, we would deliver locally, of course. But yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, anyone in Edmonton, of course, will we'll deliver locally if we can. And then uh, we'll, we ship anywhere in Canada. I guess we'll ship to the U.S. and the world, too. We ship anywhere. Yeah. As long it's as, just, as, it's just the only yeah. issue is, like, shipping is pretty expensive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like, just you know for us, I mean? yeah. Because, like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. We do some wholesale deals, you know? Yeah. Wholesale yeah. deals. <laughs> <laughs> so, Speaking yeah. of the U.S. and the world... What what band from one part in a particular world made you go, holy shit, they listen to us over there? I think mm -hmm. for me personally, when we released our first EP, someone from Germany reached out and wanted to buy a shirt, and that was pretty cool. That's pretty wild. Yeah. So And then we sent them a shirt. Yeah. I don't know about for you, if you've been or had any wild spots. I, don't know. Well, for I think uh, for Infinity. Infinity yeah, like just, just in general, no, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it's so pretty cool. And we have a guy in the, the Northwest Territories, like Nunavut, who's like ordered stuff twice off our band camp. So shout really? out to really, like, thank yeah. you. He just ordered the CD too. So shout out to that guy. That's pretty cool. Wow, have a returning customer. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from our like homies, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> now, like a diverse scene as what you guys have out there in Edmonton and. Calgary and even Vancouver where do you guys fit in with the mixture of bands like Widow Peak and X-Pain uh well what do you, what do you think mm, I don't know because uh, sure. like, with X-Pain there I think they're aren't they I've seen them live once and I know they're vocalist uh a little bit and I think they're a little more thrashy mm -hmm. and Widow's Peak I can't I think I've seen them once but I can't recall exactly what their sound is I think they're a little bit more black metal um I, if, sorry if I'm wrong but like a lot of the bands in our local scene that kind of jive with the sort of the death metal genre like be like I Forest is a big one After Earth from Calgary um you know those guys we've played with a ton uh there's a couple of like grindy bands like Culled and mm -hmm. feeding the grime exenius yeah uh, so yeah we, we do fit into a bit more of a thrashier scene uh, as well as death metal with 9-11 that's like a total thrash track mm -hmm. uh, and we the only reason we really wrote that song originally was because there was a band from our local scene called villainizer have you ever heard of that guy that those guys uh, were sadly oh, they, no yeah no worries they they were wild uh this guy named rav they were a terrorist terrorist metal band Oh, so they had songs like uh, uh, "Twin Tower Two Step" mm -hmm. uh, and like uh, "I Bomb New York" and stuff like that, like terrorist kind of themed metal. Uh, oh, okay. And, um, so they were like an Edmonton kind of local thrash band that was like kind of uh, bigger, and they asked us to play their uh, CD release party. So we wanted to like write like a total thrash track that was like about something terrorist related, and so uh, we chose 9/11 because it was like what they were about they had yeah. songs right about 9-11 and then that, that's the actual reason why we wrote 9-11 we never actually intended to have a conspiracy ep when we wrote that song we just wanted to have a banger for that for that uh show because yeah. it was a thrash crowd yeah yeah so kind of funny there <laughs> yeah. excellent 
Now, it took four years for you to release a brand new EP slash album. When can we expect the next one? Mm, I'm not too sure on that because, like, probably maybe like it's easy to speculate, I guess. Like, I would say, hopefully, I would love to say by this time next year, we'll be releasing another one. Um, We do have a lot of material written for another one. Um, we are planning on just doing like another EP, probably five or six songs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to be like a volume, like one of these ones. It's actually going to have like one concept for every song. It's going to be more oh. more cohesive. It's going to be like about one one kind of person without giving too much away. Um, and then, uh, so we have that. We have like four, like sh- sh- let's call them strong demos. Like you know, there's a lot of work to still be done, but the music is coming together a lot faster for this one because. We're focusing more on the music rather than trying to find members and like have fill-ins for gigs because that's really what the last four years, last let's say three, the last year has been this album, but the last three years has been like, we had a, f- a couple commitments. We played Armstrong, uh, we played uh, Loud as Hell, we played with Macabre in town here, the band that pretty much inspired us to start. We played with Archfire, like we had all these gigs lined up right around when the band fell apart and our vocalist quit. And then I started doing more of the vocals live and getting fill-ins for everything else. So for the three years, it was kind of like, Hey, let's make sure we can just get these gigs that we committed to figured out. And then that really put all the writing on hold. Um, and then now that we're more focused on writing, like we've been able to write a lot of material fairly quickly because we've been focusing on it rather than making sure like click tracks are done for drummers that we have like three different drummers. We need to make sure that are good for this gig and that gig. And, make sure that this guitar player, you know, so instead of focusing on that stuff, we were able to focus on music. So that being said, we're going to hopefully try to shoot for this time next year to have another EPO to tie that one off. Yeah. 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 Excellent. I like how you have to confirm with him that it was a good answer. Yeah. 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 He's he's a big, big part of the band too, man. He's 50% of it. 51. I'm 50 cents. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Out of everything you guys have had to endure over your over the time that the band has existed, what would you say was the hardest? Probably a vocalist. Yeah. And dealing with that. Um, the guy that I started the band with uh, sort of how do you say succumb to substance abuse issues put it in one word two words and uh he was actually a really good friend of a lot of people internally of the band me trey uh, our merch guy matt at the time like we kind of minus trey grew up together they were a little bit younger than me and uh he uh he really kind of he had a lot of issues with substance abuse towards the end and we really tried to reach out, you know what I mean, and uh, but like when someone doesn't want help, they don't, they're obvious, they sh- they show that. So we tried to do what we could to get him back on track, and then like he kind of stepped away from the band. We kind of told him to step away from the band, just to recoup and focus on himself. And then like two weeks later, he called me and he's like, "Dude, I don't want to do this anymore." And then uh, and then so that that was like more more so almost like a personal issue with with the homie that. Uh, mm-hmm just so happened to be in the band, but that still was probably one of the hardest things to deal with. And that all happened right around the time that we were like a, f- like a few months before we had to play Armstrong and Loud as Hell and all that. And so it was like super tough to, to get everyone on board and, and, you know, with Trey and all these fill-ins and have to deal with that all at the same mm-hmm. time. And so yeah, that would be the biggest struggle. And that was one of the things that put us off track with this latest EP was, you know, just trying to, trying to figure that situation out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that was tough. All right. Yeah. No. <laughs> for the, now let's plan ahead for let's say 5 years down the road. Where do you see Tales of the Tomb? Um well, it's I don't know, either way we're going to have tons of music that's going to be coming out like no matter what, right? Mm-hmm. I can't really speak on like the touring aspect yet obviously we'd love to tour and just yeah. like start doing uh touring europe and asia and uh you know just everywhere really mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. why not go to every continent 
on the earth, right? But yeah. <clears throat> uh, definitely <throat> probably have like a you know a couple or a few new albums out. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. that's probably what to expect. Yeah, big big thing is that we'll definitely we have four now, uh, like including the one we just talked about. EPs planned out. Whether they're going to be full lengths or EPs, mm -hmm. we have four separate kind of ideas that we want to come out with. Again, the touring thing is the show thing is so hard because it's like contingent on yeah, it's contingent on other people. So if we had people that were like solid and down to play mm -hmm. and like our our fill-ins have been solid, but it's you know it's also hard to line up things with that. So uh, five years down the road, we can uh, maybe we'll have all four of those EPs out, and then uh, maybe we'll have a full band <laughs> and we can tour. That would be dope. Be the plan. Or we'll just tour the internet with our YouTube that, yeah, videos. Exactly. There you go. Y'all hit every spot on the earth. With the YouTube with, advertising. With the YouTube advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Tune for the vines. So, yeah, the expect vines. a lot of Tales of the Tomb commercials yeah. on YouTube and Spotify, I guess. That'll be, like, big goal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, we're now at the point in the interview where we're going to stop I'm going to stop asking you questions. We're going to play a little game. Is that cool? Cool. All right. Sure. Okay. The game's called Thrash or Trash. It's a very simple game. I'm either going to say a band, song, or album. And you just let me know. If you like it, thrash. If you don't like it, trash. All right. All right. Well, do you want an answer from each of us? Like, Trey goes first, and then I go, and then and then we go to the next one? So we're not talking. However you want to do it. I guess. I guess that would make sense. All right. All right. <laughs> you go first. Okay. All right. <laughs> You gentlemen ready? Yeah. Okay. Revocation. Thrash. Thrash. Would they be someone you would want to do a thing, a, a show with one day? We played with them at Armstrong. So really? Really like a legit, like we played with, because it's a festival is completely different, but uh, we were on the same poster as Revocation was. Yeah. So that's Straight awesome. Straight up. Yeah. Ah. We put, our, the, year, uh, the year they played Armstrong was the year yeah. we got to play. So yeah. Yeah. That was cool. So that's wicked. Yeah. That that that's aw you left me speechless now, man. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, no, I I I'm a huge fan of him. Yeah. He's sick. I never never I don't know him personally, but his guitar playing is sick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh god. No you really stumped me now after that. It's just like how do I follow that now? No worries. <laughs> uh Invicta. I, I don't know them, so I, I can't yeah, comment. I can't. I've never listened to them before, so... Have you heard of them, though? Invicta? Yes. I've heard of Invictus, so I don't think I've heard of them before. They're from Kitchener, actually. Kitchener, okay. okay. There's a lot of sick black... I assume they're kind of black metal with that name. No? Death Thrash. Death Thrash. Uh -oh. We'll have to check them out. Way Look us up. Time. When we hit Ontario, we'll have to play Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll give you one last one, then we'll go to the final question. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Sabbath. I don't listen to them a lot, so I'll have to say, I'll say like thrash, but like I'm not an active listener. Sabbath? Yeah. Black Sabbath? Yeah. It's part of me. Of like a, I don't know. <laughs> but um, like Black Sabbath? You yeah, 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 yes, Black oh, Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Thrash for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like, I mean, they started it. You can't. Yeah. You can't not say that they're thrash. They're like. Yeah. They're like cornerstone number one. If, if it wasn't for the idea. song Iron Man, I you know I can't say that there'd be too many kids wanting to learn how to play guitar. You know what I mean? Which means like I'd be at a lot of students. Trey teaches guitar. Yeah. So so he's, he's, <laughs> he's probably asked about Iron Man a lot. That's what he's yeah. probably referring to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's just like a good riff. Like it's just like a solid like. I remember when I was younger, I used to call into like the bear, like our local radio station, and always be like, "Can you play Iron Man? Yeah. Can you play Iron Man?" And they're like, "Dude, you know that's like a ten-minute song. We can't like." And I'm like, "Oh." Now so they play it all the time. It's still yeah, great. exactly. Pretty funny. Yeah. Well, ex oh, well, excellent, gentlemen. We're now at the point where I ask you one last final question. We call it the poser question. The what? The poser question. Oh, no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is it. This you were to die. This is a, yeah. We asked this to ensure that we're talking to physical metal heads. Sorry? We asked this to every band just to ensure that we are talking to real oh. metal heads. Oh no, all right. All right. Oh no. Dude, are you guys going to get this wrong? I, I, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> the question is simple. Who would win in the fight, Lemmy or God? Well, Lemmy would. 
Yeah. I'm sure Lemmy's up there kicking ass right now. Yeah. Isn't Lemmy God? Correct. You got it. <laughs> oh. You know what I'm saying? So. Left in reverse. <laughs> yeah, it was a trick question. It was a trick question. It is a trick question. Excellent. Well, it? gentlemen, thank you for coming on today for an interview. We really appreciate it. Make sure to check out their brand new EP on Bandcamp, Spotify, wherever else you can stream music, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Make sure to follow them on social media. And until next time, keep on thrashing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thanks, homie. Man. Thank you. No problem. Just for political